Elegoo was nice enough to send over their new Neptune 4 Max, which is one of their bigger 3D printers. And as you can see, just the box itself takes up most of my work area. And inside the box is completely packed with foam. And they also sent two full rolls of filament along with this, which is always nice seeing that this is a large format printer and you usually print larger objects. But other than that, this is pretty much your standard flat packed box. And with the first layer of everything removed from the box, you can see the build plate, and it does have a magnetic textured PEI build sheet. And if you're wondering about the actual build volume, it's 420 by 420 by 480 millimeters. But anyways, here's everything out of the box, and I'm definitely happy to see that this came with a volcano style nozzle. But there is a downside to this, seeing that it is proprietary to Elegoo, and I really don't see where you can buy replacements yet. And honestly, they should have just stuck with a normal volcano style nozzle, so you can get a replacement just about anywhere. With that being said, this has an all metal hot end now compared to the max. Three, and you'll be able to get this up to 300 degrees Celsius. And they pretty much redesigned the entire print head, if you compare it to the Max 3 as well. They also added some bright LEDs at the bottom of this, so you can better see how it's printing. But they are still using the same sensor for auto bed leveling. And this one actually comes with a Wi-Fi antenna because this is running the Clipper firmware, so you can easily connect to it with your computer and control everything from there. And of course, this comes with all the tools needed to assemble the machine, along with the Ethernet cable. And one other upgrade this comes with is a large cooling fan. And that's mostly because this printer is supposed to print up to 500 millimeters per second, and you're definitely going to need the extra cooling. And when it comes to assembly, it's pretty straightforward, and for the most part, it's just a few bolts and plugging in a few things. And with that all assembled, I can turn it on for the first time, and it actually does take a bit of time to boot up, which is around 45 seconds. And they are using the same removable screen they're using on all of the Neptune printers, and it's just kind of held in place with magnets. But anyways, the first thing we need to get done is get this thing leveled, and this kind of uses a mix of manual and auto bed leveling, or I guess you would call it assisted bed leveling, because it has you move to different points on the bed, and then you just adjust the knobs on the bed on a piece of paper. And there's six of these in total and you want the pressure on the paper to be pretty much the same on all of them. And you really don't have to worry about this being 100% perfect because now it's going to probe the bed in a bunch of different spots and then it'll know where it needs to compensate to move up or down when it's printing to make sure everything is going to be flat. And after that, it'll show you all the results on this screen here and try not to get too caught up on these numbers unless you're having bed adhesion problems in certain spots over and over. Then I suggest just redoing this process again. And for your first print, you're most likely going to have to adjust your Z offset. And I find one of the easiest ways to do this is just to print a large square of some kind. And then as it starts printing, you can start adjusting it live and you can see if it's too far away or too close. And I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but this is super quick and easy for me. And it looks like I lost the footage for this next part, but you do have to run input shaping on the Z and Y axis. This is going to shake around your print head, and it's going to try to compensate for its movement so it doesn't translate into your prints. And after all that, I'm able to print my first test print, and it came out looking pretty good. So naturally, the first real print I'm going to do is something a bit larger. And I thought it'd be fitting to make this mud flap that I 3D scanned. And if I'm remembering correctly, it took about 12 hours to print this. And when printing this part, I started to have some problems actually. And by looking at this, it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. But if we come around the back side of it, you can see a lot of lines or stripes on the back of this. But it honestly wasn't too bad and I just let this finish. And as you can see, it did finish and it popped right off the build plate with no problem. And I'm finally able to take a look at the problem in the finish that I was seeing. And it looks like it had a bunch of ringing on this, so my input shaping wasn't really doing its job at all. It also looks like some of my supports failed, but it didn't seem to affect anything. And surprisingly, these supports come off really easily. So here's that mud flap next to another one I printed on a different printer. But first, here's a closer look at the one that was off this printer. And honestly, for this part, it's not really even a problem. But it's not supposed to be like this. And there's plenty of other things I could print that this would ruin. And this was printed on another printer. And as you can see, there's no lines or ringing. And these are both the exact same STL file, just flipped. So after some testing, checking the belts, making sure everything was perfect, along with factory resetting the printer and redoing all of that, absolutely nothing changed. And when I originally got this, it was an early model. So I just thought that the firmware or the configuration for Clipper was just wrong. So I contacted Elegoo and they sent me some updated firmware and I was able to get that all installed and it did seem to fix everything. As you can see with these two benches, this first one is from before I did the update and this other one is after. And it obviously looks a lot better. And the same thing with these nutcrackers there's an absolute ton of ringing on one of them before the firmware update and the other one has none but it does have two points where it had a little bit of under extrusion and I did a lot of printing trying to figure this
figure this whole thing out before the firmware update. Like with these two glove holders, both of them came out exactly the same. And you can see that the input shaping wasn't working on these as well, but they're also still usable and they take way too long to print and I don't need a third one. But anyways, after getting that update all done, I'm able to actually get nice prints out of it, like this adapter. And it was pretty spot on for printing parts to fit into other parts, which is always good to have an accurate printer. And everything I printed is in the same gray PLA that came with the printer, so I swapped it out for some multicolor filament that I have, and then printed this dragon. And you can see that it came out a little bit stringy, but overall looks pretty nice. But hey, the whole thing stuck to the build plate, and it's able to move around freely with no fused parts. And to fix all the stringing on this, I'm just going to use a torch and burn it off real quick. And this isn't something you should really rely on, seeing that adjusting the settings will get rid of this completely and you won't have to do this at all. You can also use a heat gun, but I find a torch works a lot better. And look at that, there's no remnants of stringing whatsoever now. And at this point, I didn't really want to deal with the tuning of this filament, so I switched back to the gray. And I printed a few more things to make sure everything was still working properly. And it was, which was definitely a relief after struggling with this printer for a few weeks, just to find out that it was a software problem. Problem. But if you do happen to get one of these now, it does have the upgraded firmware. And for the most part, all my problems are due to me getting it early. So overall, it works pretty good. And the build area is absolutely massive. And really, this is just an upgraded Neptune 3 Max, but for around the same price as the original Neptune 3 Max. With that being said, you can pick one of these up for about $470, which honestly isn't that bad for the size of a printer. And now that it's running Clipper, it's not going to take forever to print something. It's still going to take a long time, but not forever. And even though this printer can get up to 300 degrees Celsius, for printing, you're most likely not going to be using those materials with this, at least not without an enclosure. And out of the box, this is pretty much a PLA, PETG, and TPU machine, with some smaller ASA or ABS parts. And like I said before, you can connect to this printer over the internet, but you can also just put your files on a USB drive and plug it in, which is a nice option to have if your internet sucks like mine in my shop. Well, I think that pretty much sums up my experience with this. It's a large format printer, as you could tell, so it's definitely going to take up a lot of space. And once I got it working, properly, it just worked every time I tried using it. And if you're looking for anything that I used in this video, I'll make sure to have a link to everything in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But other than that, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.